Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a part of a photo shoot for MicroPro Sienna pressure treated lumber? Me neither, but I've got one scheduled in about three hours and I'm still not done the deck. What's up everybody, Mark here from Remarkable Woodworks and in this week's episode I'm going to try not to stress the frig out while I put the finishing touches on my curved pergola, which I haven't even had a chance to show you guys yet, but we're here now. So I have this thing that I say when I'm stressed out and it's I'm here and I have my health. It's just been on repeat inside my head. Did I mention that I have a photo shoot scheduled for this thing in like three hours? Because I do. I'm not stressed, you're stressed. All right, so I'm just wrapping up throwing in the skirting here, but the real stressor is when I woke up this morning, I noticed that this post here was leaning forward. So this front one was out and that back one was way out by like six inches. So I've got this temporary brace in here. This isn't really load bearing, but I like it because I can twist this handle right here and that part will spin. So I'll be able to adjust plumb, get this post dead on, then I'm going to take a measurement from the top of that down to the bottom of the deck and then run my cables through here, down there and attach it in and hopefully we get this done in time. Now that the skirting's done, let's tackle the bigger issue at hand. And that's trying to get this thing plumb, level, straight, just good enough for a photo without having to be photoshopped. That's, that's the goal for today. So like I said, the skirting is all done on this side. I am eventually going to do like a privacy wall on this, but I figured for the shoot, a lot of people are gonna wonder how I built the niches for the wall on the other side, so having this exposed leaves it uh, to be self-explanatory, I hope. Uh, I did run into an issue on this side for closing in this little gap underneath my air conditioning unit. This is Future Mark's seven minute solution to past Mark's laziness. Also have to remove that tag. Ooh, don't look at that. Totally meant to skirt the inside of this cavity here while I was building the deck, but I just didn't get around to it. I just threw a block in along here, and then that way I could tie a block down, screwed one to the side there, made this quick frame, and then fasten that in so no critters can get in there, and then I'll just add a little detail right there to block that off. But now, it's cable time. Woo! This is what I'm hoping becomes the real MVP of the day. It's a wire rope, it's got a 3 inch diameter, uh, they're saying on the package that it holds 850 pound working load. So with three of them, that's like 2,400 pounds. I'm sure that's going to be enough to hold a couple of sticks. Woo! But I've never used this stuff before, so I'm going to have to tinker around with it. I have an idea or two. Luckily for me, when I was building the pergola, I put blocks in between the rafters for this. I just wish that I would have installed it back then instead of... Oh gosh, two hours to photo shoot time. I'm here and I have my health. I'm here and I have my health. Now I can't take credit for the design of this pergola because this is something that I saw on the Ultimate Deck Shop's Instagram page. They built theirs at a cedar. I absolutely fell in love with it. I don't really like the way that cedar looks over a little bit. So I thought I'd try my hand at it with pressure treated lumber instead. And so far, I'm pretty happy with it. So the part up there, I'm just going to use one of these little rings. It has four slots in it, and I'm going to put in four GRKs to hold the wire. That'll pull everything up, hold it plumb, and I don't have to worry about 
this thing falling over, I can take the braces out, and then hopefully this thing will be done. Hopefully. That's one of the things I love about these online communities like Instagram, YouTube, it's just the ability to see things, get inspired by things, and then reach out to that source directly. So when I reached out to Shane from the Ultimate Deck Shop about how to build this, he was there just like that to help me in building this one. And there used to be a theory back in the trades that you had to keep everything you knew a secret and you want to hold it in because you didn't want your competitors to come in and underbid your jobs. And today with the way social media is, it's totally different. Half of us learn everything we know from YouTube and we reach out to people and we share things because there's this keep the craft alive movement. And what that's done is just enhance the creativity, challenged the limits, and just made us better carpenters, craftsmen, or women, and tradespeople in general. Like this trick, for example, I totally picked up online. If you gotta install one of these rings, just take a hook so that it can go in like this, put this inside the truck of your drill, tighten that. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you pre-drill into wherever you're gonna drill, but it makes installing these a heck of a lot easier. It totally worked. So the wire is holding all of the weight of this front one now and I've pulled my measurements and I can just transfer those measurements over to this rafter and that rafter so that it's a nice clean straight line. 45 minutes. Still camera time. find a crimping tool so I'm just using these I don't know what washer nut thing I don't know but it is a time suck let me tell you so this right here hooks into this hook this hook hooks into that ring and then it's fed through the hole and tied down and then I have these guys to make my minor adjustments basically the point I'm trying to get across is if you're trying to start a business or you're just getting into the trades, the internet's gonna be your friend, not your enemy. If you're shy, if you don't know how to do things, it doesn't matter. You just put it out there, you're gonna find people that are gonna be willing to help you, and who knows? You might just hate your life a little less than I do right now. But again, this is my own fault. I tend to leave things to the last minute. You should probably watch a YouTube video on how to correct that too. Just putting the finishing touches on things, and then you'll be able to work your magic.
I'm the homeowner and the contractor. Oh, okay. Spencer. Spencer, nice to meet you. I'm Mark. Oh, yeah, we're not allowed to do that. <laughs> All right, so I'm a little late, but I mean, I'm late for everything. So technically, I'm making good time. I just have to tighten this last wire, shower, clean the deck off, put my tools away, and the photographer's here already. I'm here, and I have my health. I'm here, and I have my health. I'm here, and I have my health. <laughs> We made it, I'm here, and I have my health. There's some minor things left to do on the deck still, but honestly, Micropro Sienna is harder to find today than toilet paper was in March. So we're just gonna let things cool down a little bit, and then I'll add those little details later on. But for now, it's pretty much gonna do it for this week's episode. So if you like this video, please do all the things that you're supposed to do when that happens. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. I love you all equally, and I'll see you when I see you. Okay, well that pretty much sucked. If you plan on doing this, uh, don't open your wire backwards like I just did. But we are so close, I can almost taste it. Although that's probably sawdust.